Thank you all for joining us in this Lunch and Learn. Today, we want to talk a bit about professional development as an overall idea. And also, we want to have time at the end for us to open it up to discussion. But we are going to talk about professional development in the context of an online course that Sydney and I did together. So to begin, I want to just talk and define what professional development really means to us and why you should care about it. The formal definition is that professional de development refers to continuing education and career training after a person has entered the workforce in order to help them develop new skills, stay up to date on current trends, and advance their career. So there was a statistic that saying that actually one third of employees say that they do nothing to upgrade or improve their current skill set. So if you're continually learning and improving your skills, you'll essentially have a leg up over one third of your peers. The reasons why beyond just that for why you should care is that it will greatly improve your confidence in, in your work. We talk a lot about creative confidence and design. And so this is a something that where if you're continually improving, improving, you'll feel more confident about your work. Plus, I think in Wander's perspective, since we are an agency and we have our business is always adapting and changing to the needs of our customers. So if you are continually staying up to date with trends and your skills, that's all the more better for the value that we bring as a team. So for me, last quarter, I specifically wanted to improve on my UI design skills and to learn about the principles behind a lot of the ideas. And so I did a lot of research finding the most appropriate course, given what I wanted to get out of it. And after a lot of research, I found this on Udemy called Design Rules, Principles for Great UI Design. It, it, it was highly ranked and I remember to look at the reviews because that's very a good telltale sign about whether something is going to be useful or not. And this is meant for designers, developers, and just people generally who are in the field of UX. The format was a collection of five hours worth of on-demand videos, but they were separated by five different topics, which were organizing visual information, typography and imagery, and simplifying visual cues. And within each section, there would be um, several videos ranging from two minutes long to up to 10 minutes long. So it's very manageable and very easy to chunk them out given how much time you may have. One thing that we talked about when we started off is to have very clear objectives from what we wanted to get out of the course. And for me, it was to learn design principles because I felt like when I was putting things onto a page and improving the layout of something, it took me a while just because things didn't look right or it wasn't organized in a way that made sense. Like if I needed to group a certain type of action together. And so having these principles just labeled and brought to the forefront would help me work faster. My bigger objective as well was to see how professional development and training can be fit into my regular nine to five job. How do I fit that in my daily life? So that was a larger goal of mine. And also when you're thinking about objectives, it was also important to, it's important to also be clear on what you don't want to get out of it, because then you can really narrow your focus and your learning and not waste time on things like being too specific. Like I was very clear, I didn't want to become a graphic designer after this course. I at least wanted to have some basic principles. So knowing that helped me find the right course to take. So I had really similar objectives to Debbie. And I also wanted to be able to design faster and str make stronger visual design decisions while I was working. So my second thing I wanted to, to achieve was incorporating learning into my day-to-day -day or at least into my week. And so this was kind of a way to experiment with, you know, always thinking about what I want to learn next. And then also in 
um, being able to have an accountability buddy to do that with me. So now that we kind of know why Debbie and I wanted to do this, we can talk a little bit about how we actually did it. So first, our process. So we met once a week, usually for about one hour. And these meetings were basically had three parts. So when we first would um, jump on the meeting, we would talk about the content that we had listened to or read that week and ask questions and talk about what we thought or things we really liked or things we already knew. And then the second part, we would usually share any homework we had created. So we would critique each other or talk about how it related to the videos. And yeah, basically just be able to critique each other's work, which was really helpful. And then the last thing we would do in the meeting at the very end is select which videos we were going to watch for the following week and create some sort of practice or homework assignment that we could do during the week as well. Now we can kind of show you some of the tools we used to do this. Basically, we used Udemy to watch the videos, and then we used Figma to do our assignments, and then we used Google Sheets to track everything we were doing. We kind of had our syllabus set up on the first page, and we wrote down our objectives so we could remember what we wanted to achieve during this thing and compare at the end. And then each week, would write, we would write down which videos we were supposed to watch along with the assignment. So it was really nice having it all set up here because we could always check how far we were supposed to go in the content each week. So then on the rest of the pages, we split it up by each chapter that this course had. And we ended up taking all our notes in Google Sheets, which had some pros and cons that we'll talk about a little later. But it was interesting being able to compare like my notes with Debbie's. And sometimes I would see things that she thought was really important and she would catch things I thought was important. So it was, it was cool to, to take notes side by side. And then we also had a column for questions or, or things we wanted to look up in more depth later or ideas that we would have for homework assignments. And then we also put in some an area for resources or books or things that popped up while we were learning all of these things. So then I can kind of talk about some of the assignments we ended up doing. So Udemy, this particular course did not have any homework assignments or materials for practice or even just suggestions at all. So Debbie and I made up our own assignments the whole course, which was a little bit of extra work, but I think we got a lot of freedom and flexibility in how we approached and um, practicing. So you can see some of uh, the things we decided to do. So this top row are some of Debbie's homework assignments and the bottom row are some of mine. And because each chapter was kind of on different topics like uh, principles of design or typography and color, we would kind of tackle those in the homework assignments. And Debbie approached it in that she wanted to create like a cheat sheet of notes that she could go back to. So she kind of kept a consistent way of taking, doing all of her assignments. And then I wanted to kind of focus on maximizing practice because I wanted to do it over and over again. So I tended to choose bigger screens and web layout or doing redesigns and things that required me to do it more times. So we, even though we had the same homework assignments, we uh, approached it differently, which was really cool to see how I liked seeing how Debbie approached it every week. And she could kind of like help me with mine and critique things that I could have done better. So it was really great being able to share our assignments together. So I think that if you're thinking of doing a course and the course doesn't have any sort of practice built in, you should definitely consider trying to create your own assignments or at least sharing that with someone else so they can critique things you've done. Because I think that was probably the most valuable part of, of doing the course. Um, so some of the things that we see in retrospect that were good and bad were for the pros that it was really nice the way that Udemy had set it up, or at least in this course in particular, where they did section it off into five bigger topics, but within the topic, their videos were very, very short. There wasn't one video that was more than 11 minutes long. The longest one would be, you know, 10 minutes and 30 or so seconds. And that was really good for making it manageable, especially because our one of our goals was to see how we can infuse learning into our day-to-day -day work life. So something kind of funny is that with videos, it was convenient to play it on double speed to just get through it faster. But also um, you can turn on captions. So if you're on the go, which I know Sydney was doing at one point, 
she was probably waiting in an office and was able to turn on the video and watch it with captions on and just get that done. I also think that a pro was the fact that we could do it together, Sydney and I, because we would have questions on some of the material or, you know, she might be able to explain something that I didn't understand and she would explain it in a way different than the instructor and then I would understand it that way or vice versa. And then also we created our own assignments. And like Sydney said, it was great to critique each other and make sure we were applying the principles correctly. Also an interesting pro, which we alluded to was Excel. So although Excel, it was great for setting up our syllabus and our objectives, the note-taking part, yes, it's a little bit hard and constrained, especially if you wanna paste images. But I actually think that the Excel tool was a good thing for our learning because it forces you to distill the most important facts into just that one cell. So choosing the tool of note-taking is actually a important decision to make. And like Sydney said, it was great that we had it together so that I could look at her notes. If I was watching the videos on my own, which we were doing, and I didn't understand something, I could see how she interpreted it in her cell. Some of the cons I saw for this course in particular was that it wasn't as detailed as I would have liked. It was more of a high level principle. It didn't go into too much detail. And because of that, we attached our own resources or articles on the topic to go further. Also that there were no assignments even available. So we made it up ourselves. And one thing that we wanted to do was look at B2B software, but that's not widely or publicly available. So it was hard to find examples of bad software that we could improve on. And then like one future idea would be building up the virtual classroom concept. I know with how everything is remote now, um, online education is an important topic to, that companies are working on, but um, it was very clear through this course that we definitely need to have some sort of accountability partner or someone to discuss the ideas with. And luckily I had Sydney for that. So some learnings before um, we close out is that if you are interested in doing some sort of online course or learning, definitely try to underestimate your time availability. For us, the sweet spot was three to four hours in uh, spread across a week. And, you know, the videos might take a little over an hour to get through, but then the application part would take a little bit longer. And we were fine with that. On some heavier weeks for work, we at least knew we could get through the videos so that we had something to discuss and the assignments could be done a little bit later. And the big, the second big learning is to make it your own. So obviously this one wasn't a perfect course and I don't think you'll ever find one, but don't be afraid to just use that, use the topics that they introduce as a jumping off point for going further um, and just use it as a way to introduce concepts. Some final thoughts is to never stop learning. So keep learning. And even if you don't know what you immediately need to know for your job, you can still learn something that you're curious about. And I'm sure that at some point in the future, it will come in handy. So try to make it make learning something consistent for you. Also, yeah, consistency is key. So even though for us, the course, we finished the course a couple of weeks ago, we still like, we kind of got into a habit of meeting once a week, every Friday afternoon. For us, it was a really nice way to just debrief on the whole week as well. So it wasn't necessarily we're talking about the course, but because we had that habit, now we actually want to explore other topics and so Sydney might be interested in one thing, I might be interested in another, but we have that Friday afternoon scheduled and that habit ingrained. So now we can come and just keep each other accountable for whatever topics we want to explore next. And also it's a great, great way to make friends. So I got to know Sydney on a more personal level. It was really nice to just have a debrief of the entire work week and learn at the same time. Also, one other thing with sharing our knowledge is I, I know that we have the Geek Fleet, 
in our Slack. And then also as Wander designers, we talked about creating a knowledge repository where we collectively put all some articles, some podcasts, some books that we all recommend. That's in the works coming up. So uh, those are just some initiatives to keep your eyes open for. And so that was our learning. That was our experience in this course. But we want to open up this Lunch and Learn to a discussion. And I think we can just go popcorn style of what are some of your experiences with professional development? It doesn't have to be an online course, but any conferences you like, any tips for learning. Uh, yeah, we want to hear your thoughts now. I just want to say thank you because I think it's very, I, I love the way you did it because, yeah, like listening to how the, cor the course was like only videos and no assignments. I think one of the big issues with that is that you, you just watch videos as you would watch a Netflix series or, or TV yeah. show or something like that. And it's hard to put yourself in the learning mode. And I, it happened to me that I can watch a lot, a lot of courses online, but at the end of the day, I don't remember what I've learned or it's hard to put it in practice if you, if you haven't discussed it with someone or, or if you haven't at least to notes or something. So I really love how you approach um, this, this course. Yeah, I definitely wanted to get as much out of it. Like you could easily watch five hours of videos in two days, but then you won't retain anything if you don't apply it or discuss it. So yeah, we kind of approach it in a way where, you know, we wanted to get the most out of it by adding in these assignments. Yeah, yeah I agree. I tend to watch videos like really fast and this forced me to slow down and think about one thing a week and and force me to apply it. And even if like, I know there was one week where I was really busy and I couldn't do the assignment, but even just meeting with Debbie and talking about the concept and seeing what she did, I feel like I got so much more out of it than if I would have just sped through all the videos and like listened to it in the background while I was working. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Debbie and Sydney. This, I think uh, this is very cool. You know, the way you approach it, actually Marlon and I, we are thinking in, you know, copy your model. So maybe we will be asking you a lot of things the next week yeah. about, you know, how you, you took all your notes and all that stuff. I, I think I, I never thought about taking notes in Excel uh, or any spreadsheets. And actually, it's a really nice idea. So yeah, maybe we're going to copy your model. Yeah, we can that. share that with you. Cool. Awesome. If someone is interested in learning about research, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> It's better to work in, in pairs, but yeah. Mm, yeah. That actually makes sense. It's when we do like the user testing and each uh, person has its own like column or row. And then it's so fun to get to see the final notes because yeah, you can see how the person thinks. Yeah. It's fun. It's like more straightforward to what can be impacted in the design part. So he just put like notes, like make sure to add this feature or check out this video or whatever. And then I'm like writing down everything because I love to add quotes in the reports. And then, yeah, you get to see that and it's super cool. Uh, actually what works for me and don't make fun of me, but I, whenever I see a video or anything that I'm learning and then I call my mom and explain that to her, even though she doesn't understand a thing, it makes me like push myself to how to explain in yeah. basic words and basic concepts. Sometimes my mom doesn't have time, so I just do that with my boyfriend. But it's 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 different because he knows about designs and technology and stuff like that. So it's better when someone doesn't know a thing. So it's like yeah. the simple question, like try to explain something to a five-year-old kid. It's the same. I do that with my mom. So yeah. And you know what I think about the interaction design foundation, blah, 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 blah that curse that it's terrible. So I'm glad that you get to see videos. Uh <laughs> To watch videos for me it's much simpler i hate to like read and read like thousands of articles as they do and provide that's like the main material and the videos are not that well and neither the subtitle so yeah uh, i'm glad that you get to find a, a course like that but yeah sorry that it didn't have any assignments but it's good that you uh managed to like measure yourself right yourself like test yourselves to 
if you're actually learning and stuff like that. Yeah, you bring up a good point about explaining it to someone because there are different levels of mastery. And the, like the first one is the videos where you're getting knowledge from something and inputting it into your brain. Then the second is to like apply it. And then I think that I don't remember exactly the levels. There's a model for learning. But then third is like, if you can explain it to someone, that's when you know you've mastered the concept. So definitely. You're very lucky, Kata, that your family wants to talk to you about work. Every time yeah. I call them and tell them I want to explain something, they hang up immediately. <laughs> yeah. Probably that's why she says that she's busy right now. <laughs> she's fired right here. Yeah. Besides online courses, there's also things like workshops and conferences. Have you found any other types of formats useful for your learning and professional development? I take a, I love podcasts. I mean, especially one of Future by Chris Da, and the one called Wireframe by the, I think it's the creative director of Adobe. They're yeah. great. Uh, I mean, for example, the one of, of, of Adobe, it's great for, you know, learning a little bit about um, not technical skills because you can put, you know, your hands and working on that, but a lot of theory and how, you know, uh, UI should work, UX should work and how designers should approach, you know, new technologies and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And the one by Chris Dow regarding strategy and personal development as designer uh, and business, they're great. And, and I, I found that podcasts are very useful for me because sometimes I'm like doing some other stuff and I just wanted to hear uh, about it. And it works to have some notes uh, separately. I, 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 I listened to something that was interesting, so I read it. Mm -hmm. uh, but now I will start doing it in Excel and actually having, you know, like somewhere like a repository of these ideas that are like really actionable ideas. So this is, yeah, th that, that tip you gave, it's great. Awesome. Sebastian? Um, something that works for me is trying to find colleagues who have either solved the problem that I'm trying to solve or worked on something related. Uh, I find that, you know, every time you go online, uh, everyone talks about the theory in the utopic world. And it's very different from what happens in real life. Mm -hmm. So talking to people who have either solved it or are solving similar problems is very helpful because you get to do the brainstorming. This may be the variables. Um, I, I don't know. I think that's very, very helpful. Yeah, it's challenging to also figure out the best way of even finding out who has solved that issue that you're facing. Like there's it's kind of hard to build an inventory or knowledge repository on projects because right now we're doing like an air table for like resources and and books and you can easily link things but then when it comes to bigger projects how do you share that with other people but i guess like this lunch and learn is kind of that for me when it comes to learning um i'm very old school I need the physical paper and like read it, especially if I wanna if I wanna know something in detail. Like I might be, I might listen to a podcast and like Juan was saying, just like in the background. Uh, and if something sparks my attention, I will probably research it, look for different authors. But if I really wanna like learn something, like it's a subject that I wanna be an expert in. I need the paper and like take notes and paper and write it out. Mm -hmm. I'm old guys, but that's just <laughs> the way my, my brain still processes information the best. Yeah. No, I miss that too. I miss like having a notebook and writing. It's fun. Oh, mine was similar. I was just going to ask if anyone had taken any particularly good courses recently or read anything just because I'm always like, I feel like when you, someone recommends something to you, it's always easier to like use that, like take that course. Cause you know, someone you know. trust took yeah. it. Yeah. As opposed to searching for like it, you can search forever for courses and they seem so similar and it's hard to compare them, you know? So. Yeah. 
I can I can suggest one. Check out this book by Ma Marty Kagan. I already convinced um, Melinda to buy it. I think she has it next to her desk as well. <laughs> it's a really good one. It's 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 about um, how do you structure an organization to work in a way that enables product teams um, in the way that we've defined it um, in our discussions in the Geek Fleet thing um, to work uh, and do their best work. Um, it's, it's also an effort that goes uh, from top to bottom, uh, not only bottom, uh, bottom up uh, from the teams. So it is very important to have all the strategic context, uh, you know, have the right team topologies or with team structure. So it's it's really interesting because it gives you a different sense of what it what it's required to make uh, a project successful. Um, so I think it's 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 a good it's a good it's a good read definitely. Maybe I don't know what you think, but we can probably open their table right now. Yeah. I think that it works and the format it's it. I mean it's doable. So yeah, let's open it like so. We can have Sebastian adding books. Yeah, <laughs> I can even um, give you guys a little preview. It's kind of a work in progress, but I think it's always going to be a work in progress. Um, let me share that. I would love to contribute. Maybe you guys get will get tired of me as well. Yeah, in we that, have in, in that different space. <laughs> we have a tab for books of like data visualization, like. Juan mentioned how charts lie, and I literally picked that up from the library two days ago. And we have like a rating system uh, and how many people have rated it and some categories. Um, this was mostly started off by our design team. Um, it's very like beginning stages, but yeah, we can open it up to everyone and you can add. Oh, we also have a tab on work-life balance and then you can even do like a curated list of your favorite like figma plugins or anything like that so you can send that over afterwards very cool it looks great i think um what i would love to see too is to have maybe a column for key takeaways something like that i, I think it will not only help the person who is for instance i've read the design of everyday things but if you ask me what are my key takeaways from this book, I would have to look into my memory and like, it's going to be hard. So if we can, uh, after you read something, if you can just write down your takeaways in this way, because sometimes you just don't have the time to read and, and watch everything. So yeah, where well, you can have a first cue of, yeah, is it going to be relevant to you or yeah. Yeah. We have this like description. We haven't really defined what the description column would be, but it could be a mix of what it is, but also what you like, what it really covers. Yeah. Yeah, let's call I really it description like and takeaways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the takeaways idea. It's kind of because the one other thing we were trying to, we really want this to be curated so that it's not just a giant list of a bunch of resources because it can get really big really fast. So we're trying to, that's why we want the rating system. And I think key takeaways could be a good part of that too, is like pieces, things that everyone agrees are really good so that only the best things get saved here. And, and it's not just like a huge log of everything anyone's ever read. <laughs> yes. There is just one rule in there. It's like, Ideally, we should add content that we already read, watch, or, you know, like that we, we know, right? And yeah. not bring everything there and drop it. It's like you actually took it and you learned something from there. And then you can just put it there. Mm -hmm. So I'll follow up and send that link. I guess one thing I'm curious about, and I'll stop sharing, is... Um, like, how do you know what you don't know? And also along the same lines is how do you prioritize what you should learn first? Because I definitely have a giant list of things, but I never know which one to tackle. Um, personally, I think there, there's two variables that I use while prioritizing. 
The first one is need. You know, maybe you have a project coming up or there's, there's a reason why you need to know more about that subject now and not the others. Mm-hmm. And the other one is feeling and like what, what makes me smile and makes me happy because it's also, um, I love learning. So I think it's important to try to like keep that feeling because at one point it, it also be, it's also work, you know? So if like for some reason, I always let myself, if I discovered this new book that I'm really interested in and I'm in the middle of the other one, I will drop the other one and start with a new one because if, if I really have like this desire to read it, I know I will finish it off in like four days or something. Um, so those are my two variables, how much pleasure it gives me to know more about that subject or that book in particular. And if I need it for like a professional, uh, for a client and for a project in particular, or for some professional reason at this moment. I think I'm, I tend to go more in the feeling side as well. It's like, oh, I'm excited by this book, but I have this other stack, but I'd rather just finish what's calling to me now. I just bought this one. Let's go. Blink. Oh, yeah. I don't know if any of you guys have read it. Yeah, I think I did. What so, is it? Blink, what, what was the subtitle? It's The Power of Thinking Without Thinking. Uh, and it's like what's behind the mind of making like really quick decisions and like mm-hmm. the science okay. behind intuition. And... Um, I actually saw it on a, on a series that I was watching. One of the characters was reading it and I like looked it up and I got really excited and I bought it and like, I can't wait to start it. And like my whole <laughs> list of the ones that I should be reading, like they just, <laughs> they just got depri- deprioritized. Is it about system one and system two thinking like fast and slow? Cause I read thinking fast and slow. Uh, you're muted. Oh, thanks. No, I read fast and slow. Uh, I'm not sure because I haven't started. Like, it got here, like, yesterday, literally. Okay. But, no, I think it has to do, like, more with intuition and with, like, uh, neuroscience. And, Emmy, if you like that, you should check out uh, the author's other book, Outliers. I don't know if you've yeah. read that. Outliers is uh, one of the, I don't know, it's one of the, considered one of the best. Yeah, all the Malcolm Gladwell. Well, actually, I think some of his later books are didn't get as good reviews, but yeah. Outliers is definitely one they're his one of the, one of his best. Oh, thank you. I was thinking in this question you made, Debbie, about when you know that you don't know. Yeah. I found at least it it happens to me. And I think we have talking about this in our design uh meetings or I don't remember where Mm -hmm. like you know that you don't know because you know your taste it's always faster I mean the increasing taste or or your taste like uh like you start learning more and that oh you start oh yeah like super specific things yeah goes faster than your skills usually it happens so in the moment that your taste becomes better than your skills that's the moment that you said, hey, maybe I need to learn. And then uh, you will shift the level of your taste. And then again, it will happen one more time. Like, oh, my taste went way faster and way better than my skill. So it's moment to learn again. And mm-hmm. it's, you know, not only for design, but for, you know, almost everything. The, the way you approach a project, it's like, oh, you see in, you know, in any podcast or in any document or whatever, like, oh, the way they, they made it, it's super great and I really appreciate the way that designer did it. So mm-hmm. if your skills are not at that level and you're mm-hmm. interested in that, it's the moment to, you know, start learning about that specific mm-hmm. skill. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. The more you learn about something and the more you realize you don't know it, and then it's time to go toward that. And actually I just thought of one other thing, which I don't know if this could be a systematic thing in our company, but like I know that Juan and I, we usually do design QAs. And then there was a point where I wasn't really working on a specific client. And I just asked him 
to have like 45 minutes of time. And I had all these questions for him on like, oh, how did you think through this? How did you, how did you get to this information architecture diagram? Um, and then I even asked him things like, oh, how do you make career decisions? And it was a really nice, like, I set up a really nice agenda of all these questions and I called it a lesson with Juan. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it's cool to, if that's something you guys are always curious about, like, oh, how does this person in the organization do this? It's, uh, it was a really helpful 45 minutes. And I don't know if you noticed this, but like when I'm working on ACD now, we did a information architecture fig jam and I felt a lot more confident driving that after talking to you. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us for this Lunch and Learn. It was really fun sharing our ideas. I'm honestly very surprised that you all like the Excel <laughs> taking notes. Well, thank you so much. I don't want to take up too much more of your time. And yeah, have a great rest of your day.